Emily. You degrade us, and then you ask us why we are de why we are degraded. You shut our mouths, and then you ask us why we don't speak. You close our colleges and our seminaries against us, and ask us why we don't know more. These are the words of a man named Frederick Douglass, a man born into slavery and who later escaped in the late 1830s. Racism. A few significant events and time periods come to mind for most people when speaking of the struggle that African Americans have been forced to endure over history. Many of us envision the days of slavery, men, women, and even children ripped from their native homes, forced to come here and work for nothing under unimaginable conditions and suffering, some for their entire life. Another common association that many of us think of and some remember are the days of civil rights, of the civil rights movements in the 1960s. A man with a dream, a woman on a bus, and countless other courageous and heroic young men and women who protested the Jim Crow laws of segregation in nonviolent ways. Then we come to now. We have the first black president in the White House. Many people say, well, racism is a thing of the past, right? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's right, girl. Oh, Mark. Mark King. Many people believe that since segregation and slavery, really no, slavery no longer exist, that racism in those greater sense is a thing of the past. Well, today the U.S. faces a new form of segregation that many don't even realize exists. Mm -hmm. It lies in the form of mass incarceration particularly that of African-American men. Today I want to enlighten you. It's a controversial subject. Not all of you will agree with me, but I believe it is important to discuss, even if it's uncomfortable to discuss. Today I want, I'm going to discuss racism throughout history. I've read three speeches that discuss racism, and specifically to African-Americans. The three speakers I will talk about today are Fred Frederick Douglass, Julian Bond, and Michelle Alexander. The first speaker I'm going to introduce you to is Frederick Douglass. When I began thinking about, uh, when I began this speech, I began thinking about all of the struggles that all different ethnicities and religions and people have faced throughout history. I myself come from a family of uh, my great grandparents escaped, no, my grandparents escaped Russia during the Nazi regime. My family's Jewish, so they escaped, wow. and so um, all different kinds of people have had to overcome just incredible adversities, and I think about my own struggles that I've had in life, and they seemed so major and so big at the time, and, and then I think about history, and even what people still endure today. So I started thinking of the atrocities that occurred during the times of slavery. I read a speech by Fred Frederick Douglass named Fighting Rebels with Only One Hand. Published originally in 1861, he discussed the prejudice and the inequalities that African Americans faced and endured, particularly during the times of the Civil War. One part that stood out to me was, he said, what a spectacle of blind, unreasoning prejudice and pusillanimity it is. The national edifice is on fire. Every man who can carry a bucket of water or remove a brick is wanted. But those who have the care of the building, having a profound respect for the feeling of the national burglars who, oops, sorry, who set the building on fire, are determined that the flames shall only be distinguished by Indo-Caucasian hands and, have, and to have the building burnt rather than to save it by means of any other such pride and stupidity and folly that, the, that rules the hour. For me, that part of the speech mm -hmm. shows how blinding prejudice and racism can be. Basically, these people were fighting a war and they, even if they could get help from people that were willing to fight, they didn't want the help if it wasn't from their kind, if it was just a difference of skin color. Then I started to think about slightly more recent times, which led me to find a speech by a speaker named Julian Bond, who worked with Martin Luther King, Ella Baker, 
people of those days in the civil rights movements in the 1960s. They fought in peaceful protest against the Jim Crow laws of segregation, just for their basic rights as human beings. We all have rights, should have rights, and they were not receiving those rights at this time. And they were part of some of the major fighters, the first fighters in the movement. In his speech, uh, he gave this as the chair of the NAACP, he spoke out about the days of Jim, Jim Crow. He says, we all had lived through Brown versus the Board of Education. We all had seen the initial burst of optimism that, Brown, that the Brown decision brought to black America. We had all seen Emmett Till's murder in Mississippi. We had all felt, had been made to feel particularly vulnerable because if these white racists would kill a young kid like Emmett Till, what might they do to us? So we lived through these experiences, share, shared a commonality. We had engaged in this common pursuit of lunch counter sit-ins and we formed an organization that we named, that we temporarily named the Temporary Student Nonviolent Co Coordination Committee. As I read, I could feel his un the uncertainty and the fear that the people felt during those times, and they were still will willing to stand up for their rights. Mm -hmm. I feel so much respect and uh, admiration for people that have that kind of courage. Mm -hmm. And they worked in, in nonviolent, peaceful protest, which is hard to do, thank you, yes. <laughs> So then I was thinking, where are the Julian Bonds and the Martin Luther Kings and the people who were brave enough to escape slavery of today? Where are they now? I'd been reading a book called The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. I'm going to pass this around. You can look at any of the comments or whatever on the back if you'd like. This is where I found, excuse me what I believe to be one of the new great leaders of our time. Her name is Michelle Alexander, not as famous as some of these other civil rights leaders. She is the third speaker that I'm going to introduce to you today. Jennifer Schleschner of the New York Times tells about her. She is a Stanford Law School graduate, a Supreme Court clerkship, and is the director of the American Civil Liberties Union's Racial, Union's racial Justice project in Northern California. Actually, I don't believe that she is today, but she this was in 2011. So. The speech that I read and also watched was when she was the keynote speaker at the American Friends Service Convention. Found, uh, I found a copy of it in the June edition of Street Sprint. It's a San Francisco journal. Her speech discusses the injustice and discrimination that is that people who are labeled criminals experience today. And the largest population of this group that is placed in that category is African American men in particular. In her speech, she says, I came to the conclusion that what has changed since the collapse of